Minister Morten Østergaard. Today you have received the oath declaration. What will be your next step? Well, now I meet with my colleagues uh, at the end of May uh, to hopefully agree on the content of the new framework program. And there the declaration will be a strong signal that uh, excellence needs to be the guiding principle also in the years ahead for the common European research policy. So I think that uh, my colleagues will be impressed with the work here when I show them and the declaration and then we'll go into the negotiations. But how will you make sure that the 80 billion euros will actually lead to excellent research and not least the expected growth in Europe? Well, first of all, we have uh, seen a proposal from the Commission where the ERC, that was a, a new aspect in the last framework program, has been uh, proposed to be enlarged very much uh, budget-wise. Uh, and I think I sense a strong support for that uh, across the countries. And second of all, I think it's important to stress that excellence is not only for basic research, but also when we're tackling societal challenges, we need to make sure that excellence is the guiding principles, because only if we develop the best solutions to the societal challenges, then it will actually lead uh, to jobs and growth in Europe. President of the European Council, Helga Novotny. Does Europe have research talents enough to invest in, so that we can ensure that the 80 billion euros are well spent? My answer is a definite yes, because we see young, talented researchers all over Europe. And what we see from the perspective of the European Research Council in particular is that over the five years that we have now been running, there is no decline in quality of applications, rather the contrary, there is an expansion of number of applications with the quality the same or even higher. And what will the European Research Council's strategy for the ERC grant be prospectively? We do not intend to change uh, in any dramatic way what we are doing now. So we will continue to fund starting grantees. This means from two to 12 years after the PhD. And we will continue to fund advanced grantees. What we have recently added is a small scheme called proof of concept for those ERC grantees who work on ideas that can have a potential for commercialization. We provide them with means to either draw up a business plan or to investigate about intellectual property rights. So we give them some starting aid to take their ideas further towards market, but then others have to take up. And the other scheme that we have recently added on an experimental basis is the so-called Synergy Grant. And the Synergy Grant uh, we ha has met with a lot of interest, 700 applications, in the end, our budget allows us only to fund some 15, but it shows the idea meets uh, the demand of the scientific community. And the idea is a very simple one. Uh, two to four people who have an ESC profile can come together to work on an idea that they can implement only in this particular configuration. So we want to give them space and time to think and work together, but again, bottom up. And I'm quite sure that there will be many interesting topics that go in the direction of the grand challenges, but it's a bottom up process. Rector of Aarhus University and host of the Excellence Conference, Lauritz Holm Nielsen. Aarhus University has succeeded in obtaining a high number of ERC grants. Can we expect that the universities will receive even more grants for free research in the future? No, <laughs> we cannot because we want the ERC to select the very best uh, candidates for grants. But we hope, and uh, just two numbers, when I was a student at this university many, many years ago, it had 4,000 students. Nowadays we have 40,000 students and we have about 4,000 doctoral students and postdoctoral students. So out of those 4,000 very, very selected uh, and good brains, I'm sure some of them will be competitive and also compete for ESC grants. So I'm 
I'm confident, but I want to underscore that ERC should have excellence as its goal and select based on the very best uh, proposals and do their best to find the best minds from wherever in Europe or outside of Europe for that matter they come. You have been a significant part of the Declaration. What is your hope for the future of the Declaration? My hope for the future, I'm, I'm very optimistic in fact because I think when I came back to Europe uh, in 2005 from the United States I saw that we were we had lack of optimism. I still feel a bit we lack optimism in Europe, but I also see light. I think we are getting more and more uh, of the strong forces to formulate uh, policies and also um, to uh, make the right selections and so forth. We have a lot of strength and I see a bright future for Europe as one of the cornerstones of the global knowledge economy. So in that sense, I, I'm very optimistic. I'm also optimistic because a university like this one is a very young university and we are, we are doing, a, a, I, th I believe, a good job for Europe and many other universities can do the same. So I, I don't see why we shouldn't be uh, optimistic and in fact also face the comp competition from uh, the US and China and, and uh, other, other continental countries. Uh, why, why be uh, shy? Thank you.